Hi everyone, so I'm Abby, I use she, they pronouns, and I am the first portion of Man-Made Misconceptions. My topic to be talking about today is gender and self-expression. And so getting into this a little bit more, we're going to be talking about what is sex, gender, and sexuality, and are these interchangeable terms, meaning are they the same things or are they different? And then we're also going to talk about the idea of a gender binary. And then along with all of this, we're just going to talk about the misconceptions of each of these ideas. And then how can you help support and be an ally or be able to present for yourself? So gender, sex, and sexuality. So what are they? Sex is the biological parts we are born with. Um, gender is how we perceive ourselves. Um, and these can differ. Um, you can feel and perceive yourself one way, but you might choose to present another way. Um, kind of as an example, say you were born with the sex of a sex of a male, but you perceive yourself as feminine. But because of your family, if you lack support or your school, um, many different reasons, you may still choose to present yourself in a masculine way for fear of um, rejection and judgment and just many other things. And then our sexuality, that's who we're attracted to and who we love. And so this diagram of the gender unicorn is one that I've had presented to me in many of my different courses throughout college. Um, and I think it's just a really good graphic. So it shows about how gender identity is internal. Um, again, that's how we perceive ourselves. Gender expression is how we actually portray ourselves and show to the those around us and to the world. And then our sexuality is in our heart. It's who we're attracted to. It can be physical or emotional. Um, or it can be both, meaning a, that you could be physically attracted to men, but emotionally attracted to women and a whole combination of these. Not That's not just the only way that it works, but there's a whole combination. And so to get into this a little bit more, we're going to talk about the misconception is that um, the idea that everyone follows this continuum from Yes Institute's gender continuum course um, and the idea that... Um, People, if you're born, so like this diagram shows, if you're born female, that means your gender is going to be feminine and your orientation is male and orientation just means your sexuality. So if you're born female, you have to present feminine and be attracted to males and then same thing, but vice versa for males. Um, but as we know, this is not true. Um, and we're going to get into this a little bit more um, with some upcoming slides. But so I wanted to even get into as well, the idea that there's only female or male sex, because that's not true. Um, sex itself is not a binary, meaning it's not one or the other. There's people who are intersex. And for those of you who don't know, intersex is a combination of, um, it can be just down to chromosomal, but it's, you have a mix of female and male um, biological sex organs. And so even just labeling someone as only male or female is already incorrect in itself because there's a whole scale of this. And then another example of this actually is just, if you say you look at females, we'll talk about females, for example. Judith Borber um, talks about the idea that sex is based off of our hormones and hormones, as we know, fluctuate throughout life. So say um, the hormone levels that you have as a kid is completely different from the hormone levels you have as you're going through puberty. And then it's completely different as if, say, when you get pregnant. Um, all of these hormone levels are fluctuating and constantly changing throughout life. And based off of what hormonal levels we have at birth, um, it's typically how they help assign sex at birth. And so showing that these levels change shows that there's a continuum of sex, that it's not just one or the other. And so the second misconception I'd like to talk about is the idea that gender is a binary. And this is false. Um, gender is socially constructed, meaning that the societies we live in, the cultures we live in, the time periods we grow up in, our religions, um, and Judith Lorber goes more into more into depth within this in her book, Breaking the Bulls. Um, but Basically, it's just meaning that depending where we grow up, what time, who our family is, what religion, where we are in the world, um, all of these different things affect what makes gender. And so um, the concept that being, being male or being female can be completely different, say, between um, the United States versus countries like in Africa. Um, 
the gender roles and gender expectations that our society sets based off of the needs of our families um, and just of the culture is what defines gender. And so that already is showing us there's a whole wide range of what it could mean to be male or female. And so you can't just label and put male and female in two separate boxes because there's a whole continuum of these concepts. And so continue, continuing with this, Judith Lorber also talks about how gender, people see gender as um, a good way to structure and organize our society, that if something has a label, that means it has a place. And that again is false. It, in reality, setting gender rules, it, um, it restricts us and it limits us, and it excludes individuals who don't fit those perfect um, expectations of what society sets. For example, even with myself, um, society, at least here in the U.S., um, likes to talk about how males are big, strong, short hair, um, don't express a lot of emotion. They're the dominant ones in a relationship, um, the breadwinners, etc. Females, on the other hand, are supposed to be skinny, um, keep to themselves, respectful, obedient, long hair, um, wear makeup, very feminine presenting. And I don't match either of those as we see. I have I have short hair. Um, I'm wearing makeup. I love going to the gym and working out and trying to get bulky like they talk about, just working on getting strong. Um, and so I very much take on characteristics of both categories. And so if based off of just the idea that gender is a binary, I would be somewhere in the middle because I have characteristics of both, which would be known more as androgyny. And so then kind of continuing with this, Judith Lorber also talks about, can this change? Can we break through these, con these ideas and misconceptions of the idea that gender is a binary, that it's male or female? Um, and the simple answer would be yes. It's not going to be necessarily a simple tax task, even though if everybody faced this as individuals on their own time, it could happen. She just talks about how um, gender is something that we perform. Gender is very performative, uh, meaning that we show it. We do this by our actions, how we interact with other people, um, like our families, our friends, our colleagues at work. Um, but we have to be conscious of these actions because if we feel one way, but are acting another, again, that's idea, the idea of internalized gender versus performative. Um, and so if we are able to embrace how we really want to feel, and if what you want to do is in alignment with these gender roles, by all means, go for it. But it, the idea of all of this is to be able to free those of us who don't necessarily fit into these boxes to be able to express ourselves and not feel so secluded or excluded from what society deems as the ideal male or female. That There's a whole spectrum of these and so then the third misconception is, is sex, gender, and sexuality, are they interchangeable terms? Um, this is false, as we have learned from my previous slides. Um, sex, like I mentioned, that is what we are biologically born with as a child. Uh, gender is how we perceive ourselves, and then also how we portray ourselves to society, and those can be different things and fluctuate even just day to day. Um, like, for example, some days I have very masculine days, some days I have feminine, some days I like to just be very androgynous. And then sexuality, again, as we mentioned, that's from the heart, who we're attracted to physically and emotionally. All three very different concepts and all three very important. And so then a final slide I would like to include, um, well, not quite final, but anyways, I just wanted to show some examples of how gender can be so fluid from what we see in media. Um, all the way from Demi Lovato, who dresses very feminine and very masculine and very androgynous, uses they, them pronouns, and then same with Ruby Rose, uses they, she pronouns, um, presenting in a very masculine, but mostly androgynous is what they're known for. Um, and then again, Harry Styles, um, he, they pronouns, but presents however he feels on the day um, and it really embraces his feminine side. And then Zendaya and Tom Holland um, typically present um, in the way that their gender would align. But then also, I know recently Tom Holland was pictured on, I think it was a lip syncing show. Um, he was wearing a dress and then Zendaya rocking suits on the red carpet. And then we have Elliot Page, who has recently come out as transgender. 
And then Lady Gaga also presents very feminine sometimes, but also really embraces her androgynous side. And then Sam Smith, androgynous. And then, of course, iconic Ryan Reynolds, um, cis straight man, he, they, pro or he, him pronouns, um, but embracing, again, his gender. And again, if you fit society's typical boxes of what gender is, that is totally great. The point of this project is to be able to express everyone, though, not only the people who align with those um, like requirements, I'll call them by society. And so then finally, I just wanted to call it out there. Um, express yourself. Um, wear the clothes that make you feel most like you because how you feel about you is all that counts. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of dressing how you feel. If you want to wear a sweatpants, sweatpants and a sweatshirt one day, just because that's cozy, go for it. Um, if you want to wear a dress and society tells you you should be wearing a suit, wear that dress. Do it. Seriously. I mean, I, for example, I'm going to be wearing a suit to prom. So yeah, um, I just really advocate that the whole point of my project is about teaching the difference between sex, gender, and sexuality, but also being able to embrace yourself. And so then I just wanted to show, here's some of my sources that I used for this information. Um, and a big thank you. And so now I'm going to get more into my personal journey with gender and self-expression. Um, and then we'll continue from there. Thank hey you. guys, so I'm gonna share some of my personal experience with how my gender expression has changed throughout the years. As a kid, I was always the most comfortable when I was wearing like, t-shirts and basketball shorts. Really just anything that I could just cover myself. I didn't want to be constantly dressed in pink and looking all girly and quotation marks. I just always seemed to feel the most free if I could put on a t-shirt and some shorts and call it a day. And I mean, this picture was on Christmas and I'm in a t-shirt and a headband, like, you know, like, I never really thought much about this, you know, like I said, I was comfortable and this was before the age that I really started realizing what, like, everyone else around you was wearing, so I was just like, and I was in basketball and I was very much an outdoorsy kid, my daycare that I went to was all boys. Um, so, so I was just like always dressed to get down and dirty in the mud because we'd be taking our bikes off of ramps and jumping on the trampoline to go run in the mud afterwards. Just everything outdoorsy and just like typically boy activities, you know, um, as the gender binary expresses. <laughs> but yeah. And so like this was great for just like my overall like well-being as a kid. Like again, I didn't really realize it. Um, but when I was really young, I was constantly dressed in pink and like, um, no headbands because I was constantly misgendered um, because I was bald until about the age of three. And so my family would overdress me to really fit into the like stereotypical box of a female and girl. Um, and so as soon as I could choose to not do that when I got older, I was out of it. Um, as we've seen, and I mean, here's just some quick examples. I mean, clearly I was not very happy. <laughs> so now moving past, um, like, early elementary stages where I was in my t-shirts and basketball shorts, um, as I got to the end of my elementary school career, I had a teacher who was very, very feminine, very, um, and very vocal about it, and I loved her, so it's no hate against her. But as a fifth grader, she bought my first pair of leggings for me ever um, because she wanted me to try and dress more girly. And I didn't think anything of it really as a kid. Um, she gave me the leggings. Here, I know you like comfortable clothes. You enjoy your sweatpants and your basketball shorts. Leggings are a great way to be comfortable to look, but to look a little more dressed up. Um, and I thought this was just a really nice gesture of her. I was like, okay, I guess I'll try it. So when I got into middle school, I wore a lot of leggings and sweatshirts. Um, but then around this time, obviously we're going through puberty and far more self-conscious about everyone around us and what we're doing and what we look like. Um, and so I began to wear jeans and sweaters. Um, just kind of as a means to try and blend in with those around me. However, though, I did start to actually embrace it and I did enjoy it for a chunk of time. Um, as I got into my freshman year of high school and sophomore year, I started doing a lot of, um, I started, I joined track first of all, and I started doing a lot of health programs, trying to lose weight and just overall help improve my physical health. Um, 
because that was a large part of it. I just wasn't happy with myself physically and that was really manifesting in a sense of by dressing how all of my peers were. I felt like that I was able to fit in better. So for this chunk of time, it really was good for me. Um, but as I got older, I was happy with my body and realized that how I was dressing was not fulfilling me anymore. Towards the end of high school, I, like I said, I was really, I was really happy with the progress I was making. I was working out. I had lost a lot of weight. I was just confident in who I was as a person. Um, and that confidence started giving me um, more motivation to dress how I wanted. And so I'm gonna insert some pictures too to show me starting to embrace my style a little bit more. Of course, it is still very feminine presenting. However, I was happy. I really enjoyed how I was dressing and I felt comfortable in my clothes, which was a big thing for me. But when I started college, I was able to fully embrace who I wanted to be. And of course, um, this wasn't something that I had in mind. Like if I look back at myself in high school, I would not picture me as I am currently. I would not picture myself with short hair or having shaved my head or dressing very androgynously. Um, it's just not something that was in my mind at that time. So that is what proves and shows how gender expression, sexuality, all the above is just very fluid and it develops with time as you grow as a person, um, which is what has been the biggest game changer for me. And so when I came to college, all of my roommates um, were very, very, very supportive <clears throat> and helped push me and support me to dress how I wanted to dress. Um, and so I was really able to embrace that. And now just as time goes on, um, I just, every day I'm growing and I try on new things. I am really embracing my mask side recently as well as androgynous. Um, and with this embracement, I have also been able to um, share that I go by she, they pronouns, which has been a big part of everything. <laughs> it's been a big, uh, a big game changer, honestly. And this embracement is what has started my motivation for this project. And it's where the motivation for the hashtag feeling me has started because I finally do feel like myself. And while my presentation does change from day to day, it's the fact that I'm able to present all sides of myself without any fear of judgment at all. Can you summarize what like, embracing your expression has done for you like, emotionally, just as a person? Um, like the biggest feeling that you've gotten from all of it? Which is...
group is so diverse, and I love that, because we all have different stories, and that honestly stems from something like this. And, like, we all, I think we all kind of have, like, a certain style that we can all probably, like, come to one, one level <laughs> on. Like, I, I think there's days that we can all look like each other in a sense, but there's days that we don't, and I'm like, this is, you know, amazing. And I, it never gets boring, and I, I really like that. Yeah. Well, I guess you don't have an example. Turtle yeah, turtle 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 tur